welcome to another Squadcast. I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway, and joining me as always is Caboose. We got Steve, and all three of us always break down the latest news in gaming. And we invite a friend. This week we have Ophelia joining us. Welcome. Hey. How's Hello. everybody doing? How's everybody's <laughs> weekend? My weekend is good. It's Chill. Same. Yeah. Down, I'm gonna, I switched. I switched setups, so I'm in a new room now. So yeah. things look a little weird because of that. I apologize, but uh, we're matching yeah. backgrounds, kind of. Nothing mm -hmm. happening. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I think my background's still better. Um, okay, well, I like mine, dude. <laughs> my background Thank could be you, anything. Ophelia. Is the thing right? Actually, Steve didn't get the notice. It was supposed to be like a blank slate behind us. Okay. Steve. Ah, sorry, guys. Together. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I, will say, I will say, Caboose, you've got the green screen up, ready for the grand reveal. When you're ready, you can just drop that thing <laughs> just in a drop moment. It down. <laughs> uh, Boom. The foot's behind. Maybe next week. Maybe next, next week. week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. Now that's the mystery. What's behind the green yeah. curtain? What's behind the green screen? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's make never your gonna guests. tell us. He's make never your guests in us. the chat. <laughs> I don't know. Lots of maybe you're hiding a lot of uh, Death Stranding love. No. Closet fan, maybe. No. I don't know. He has a shrine. There's a, or something. There's a shrine dedicated <laughs> yeah. to my hate for Death Stranding. Actually, come on. <laughs> oh dang it! Dang it! All right, chat. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about Google discontinuing uh, game development uh, for some aspects of Stadia. Mass Effect Legendary Edition brings the trilogy to the future on May 14th. The best MMO RPGs coming in 2021 and beyond. And WB Interactive's plans for acquired Middle Earth technology. So mm. you know what we're going to be talking about. Let your voice be heard in chat. Clip some of your favorite moments. Um, if we answer your questions, you could clip them and share them with us on Twitter at Squad State. Let's start the discussion because this one was a really interesting one. Um, it was last week that we got some sort of news about Google Stadia. They've been very quiet for a very long time. And you mm -hmm. would think the news that we would hear is maybe a new game coming to the platform, maybe a drop in price to, or free trials, something to that aspect. But instead, we get the news that they're actually closing down some of their internal studios. Um, so, oh. so before we even get a Stadia made game, yeah, the fun is already over. So mm -hmm. Stadia is no longer going to focus on developing uh, exclusive titles or internal titles. They're, they said that this is not the end for Stadia. They're still um, invested in being a competitor to console gaming. So they're going to be looking to their partners like Ubisoft, um, which they mentioned at their first reveal. Mm. Now we're also finding out that Jade Raymond, <laughs> who was kind of the head of their internal studios, also is leaving the company. So she's not, mm. um, you know, she's not just moving to a different department. She is fully leaving Google Stadia. Of and course, she we, previously used to work at Ubisoft, right? On the Ubisoft. So yeah, yeah, she she did the Assassin's Creed game. She's helped launch that franchise. She opened the Ubisoft Toronto studio. Then she went mm. on to work at EA. Um, so mm. she has like a pretty uh, good resume behind yeah. her. Mm -hmm. yeah. But with this news, how do you guys feel about the future of Stadia? Uh, I mean, th this is tough because like dozens of people are going to be devastated by this news, <laughs> you know, like, well, okay, to be fair, okay, to be fair, I, I want to just clarify <laughs> dozens of people in terms of the developers that were working with Google. Yes, they are going to be definitely they are devastated. Okay, okay, okay. However, in regards I just, just want to like make sure we're not being like, you know, insensitive. I know right. you weren't being insensitive. Okay, okay, we're okay. making a joke because this is kind of funny right. for Google Stadia. But I just want to clarify. I'm just talking about they, the people who are fans of Stadia. Yes, yeah. yeah but I want to say like Google said that they're going to try to help their developers find mm -hmm. other positions. So I just want to put good. that out there. Okay, go ahead, Caboose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I wasn't trying to take a dig at the developers. Uh, and I'm sorry if it came off that way. Because yes, of course I feel for the developers who are now like on the hunt for a new place to be or a new place to stay. And shout outs to Google for like helping them out in that process. But when it comes to like, stadia as a platform as a place to play games it's just not working <laughs> like it's just i there's really no two ways around it at this point you know mm -hmm. they've tried a multitude of different things and it's a cool concept 
but it's just I, I don't know it still feels too gimmicky and at the end of the day if i'm going to choose to either play on stadia versus pc versus xbox versus playstation versus nintendo switch i choose the consoles or a pc nine right. times out of ten maybe even ten times out of ten you know so yeah. it's tough it's not working and it's unfortunate the way that it's going down and i feel for the people who have lost jobs and stuff like that um but i don't i don't know what else can they do at this point what else can they do it it's tough i mean i don't think the majority of players out there have the infrastructure to support only cloud gaming when when you look at other like competitors such as like xbox for instance with x cloud you still have that ownership and kind of hub for yeah. for when you want to play like I, I can launch up xCloud on my phone or on a tablet and take those games with me but at the same time like at the end of the day I can still go back to my Series X continue playing yes. and I know that my games are there right yeah and granted I live in Toronto which has really great internet but that's that's not everyone's case there are people living in rural areas or other countries where they, they can't they can't maintain speeds that are needed for cloud gaming. Right, right. So it's and not it, going to be easy. It's not accessible for everyone. It's yeah. not easy for everyone to be able to play Stadia to try it out in mm -hmm. the first place. Um, and so that's why it's, it's such a niche thing. Yeah. And you can't really grow, grow a platform on, yeah, on that niche yeah. of a concept. But even with that, uh, with that there, I don't think Google is video game material. I mean... They launch many ideas, like many, way too many ideas. And they're good in research and development, but carrying a game from scratch to publishing to marketing, it's a whole new story for them. I mean, right. they're good marketers because, yeah. well, they sell our info. So, well, it's kind of the job. But does it make a good company for video games? I'm not so sure. I'm closing two uh, different agencies. And both um, companies they closed didn't even publish one game. Right. So they've just been working for nothing. Yeah, And that's kind of yeah. shady, I would say. Like, you can't blame it on the crisis. You can't say, oh, yeah, but it's COVID. You're Google. I mean, Google is kind of, I don't know, it's not even a country. It's bigger than all of us. Mm -hmm. and no, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's so unfortunate because... Here. Google has that much money in its pocket that they can invest in opening up two studios. And as soon as they don't see that immediate return, be it a game, they're just like, okay, cut it. And uh, it was reported that like this will affect oh. roughly 150 people who are in those studios. And I mean, yeah, to, to their credit, they are trying to help them and support them by finding new roles. But that's kind of like a... Consolid mm -hmm. consolidation prize, right? Like that's not what they came in for. And is it? I mean, so I don't do think you Google's feel... gonna apply for them. Yeah. Uh, so Steve, like based on what you were saying, do you feel that it was Google who was like, okay, we don't even have a game out. Like, let's cut this project. Possibly. I, I think it was a mix of mm -hmm. that. And also they saw like a huge return from and reception from cyberpunk's launch i mean that was a huge boon for them where they could they could go out on social media and start marketing like this is the best place to play cyberpunk right now yeah right <laughs> so and it was one of, it was one of the first it was one of the first games as well like just to add to what you're saying that they were advertising stadia like this will be playable on Stadia, that big launch title, yeah. I think, for them in terms of games that were not out yet for anybody, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, to what you're saying, they really could have pushed that, and then that failed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they've gotten bad, like, kind of negative reviews over Stadia just because of, you know, the elephant in the room. It's not accessible, like you were saying, Steve, to a lot of people. It, it doesn't make sense. It's kind of like... Um, an Elon Musk dream, right? That's way ahead of its time. We're not there yet. So yeah. for them to kind of invest so much money to pull people, because I do think they had what it takes to make great video games. They pulled, uh, you know, Jade Raymond from, you know, the, I would money. say the heavens <laughs> of like <laughs> the video game elites, right? Uh, they know they have money to attract people to work with them, the, to attract people from their competitors to work with them. So it's not like they weren't well, able to make this happen. I think they realize we're just not there yet. The 
Yep. Yeah, but why? Why wouldn't they be? Why wouldn't they be there yet? Because they have money to buy the best people around. They have money to get the best hardware. They have money for the marketing. So why not? I mean, what's stopping them? Mm -hmm. That's I, I think we miss something here because there got to be a reason. You don't stop a project in the middle before even getting feedbacks. Well, some should. Do you think it would have been beneficial for Stadia to, yes, have a cloud gaming aspect, but maybe branch out into something else? Like, if they really wanted to, they could have focused on their game development and also bring that to other platforms as well. Do you think that was a missed opportunity? Or what were some of the missed opportunities that Google could have done to kind of save Stadia? I think it was... That, I, no, I was just going to say, I think it was launching without something in the bank already, without it launching that like killer app. Launching at the same time that you're working towards developing a game, that's a, that's a huge mistake. I mean, and not only that, but their whole subscription service was all kinds of whack. Like, like you said, Camille, that was, Cyberpunk was their first big title, temple title that they could say, okay, it's launching day and date on Stadia. I mean, they still have like some other games like Hitman and um, a few other AAA games, but they're not, yeah. they don't have that ongoing catalog where it's like, okay, um, let's just take another game that came out recently. Uh, I'm just trying to pull something. Uh, Valhalla? X game that came or... Val well, I think, Val I think Valhalla they do have a relationship with Ubisoft. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to think of a, another game, but they don't have that ongoing catalog of like, okay, it's coming Xbox, PlayStation, Switch. Stadia as well. Yeah. That that's too and far between, and that doesn't make it for a compelling purchase for a customer. They don't have that it, legacy. It's just at the end of the day, exactly. And at the end of the day, like like I said, there's too many people who are aware or familiar with PlayStation as a brand or mm -hmm. Xbox as a brand, and there's definitely a lot more people nowadays who are playing on PC. So to have just a new place to play games, to introduce something brand new, to potentially rip those people away from communities they may already be involved in or friends that they may already play with, it's just too difficult to do. At this point, there are the three heavy hitters and PC. Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, PC. I think it, like those are always going to be the four juggernauts of the gaming industry when it comes to where you can play games. Um, and to try and create a new platform, a new place to play games is going to be way too difficult. doesn't matter if you're Google, doesn't matter who you are, what you do, how good the platform could potentially be. Cause even if Stadia was just the perfect everything and it worked flawlessly and it didn't matter how good or bad your internet was, you could just play games and stream them pretty much. Um, regardless of that, people would still rather be playing on their consoles or their PC because that's just the way that it's been for however many decades at this point and that's the way that i think it's going to be for however many decades in the future yeah i mean it's it's up to exclusivities i guess because if stadia had a good lineup like spider-man and the stranding and everything was only what? on stadia yeah if you couldn't play anywhere else I'm watching you could play on stadia <laughs> i'm not targeting anyone here i have no idea what you play steve <laughs> But yeah, basically, if they had good games that you couldn't play somewhere else, you would play on Stadia, but right. well, they shut down the studios. It's kind of sad that, you know, like we've come to this place in gaming where we have these juggernauts which publish and create uh, great platforms to play games on to think now that it's hard to see a newcomer come into the picture and kind of shake up the industry offer us right. something different sure, right. because I want to believe, and maybe this is me, you know, always thinking the glass is half full. I want to believe it is possible. I want to believe that there is room for a newcomer to come in. I think, you know, the downfall, yes, uh, Google, they don't have the games, you know, they don't have that, that accessibility. However, um, maybe there was something else that they could have done. Maybe yeah. offering it in partnership with maybe, um, PlayStation, who doesn't have a strong streaming service, might yeah. have made sense, right? Um, focusing on partnerships rather than just exclusivity. Because I think exclusivity, to make that work, you have to have that legacy behind it. We look at yeah. something like PlayStation. They're known for those for those their first-party titles that create great stories and uh, create 
great adventures for a gamer to go on, right? Yeah. Uh, you think of Xbox and the most affordable way to game. Um, but for Google, I think that's so much harder to sell, right? And and maybe that's what their focus was on. We're going to, they put themselves against the consoles, right? They're yeah. like, we are going to make a better experience than console gamers, right? Yeah. We're, yeah. we're, if they really want to do that, why not partner with PC companies? Why not partner with maybe a Discord? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not partner with maybe Steam? Right. So I, I feel yeah. like that that just was kind of Google being Google in the sense that everything they create, it's just them doing mm. their own thing. Mm. Um and I said this from the start when Stadia launched. I'm not, you know, gonna think that this is gonna shake up gaming because Google is known to launch so many things and just test them out and then just close the projects down. Yeah. So now when we look to the future of Stadia, I can't see, although I do want to see Google invest more money into it and really try to make this work. Um, I just feel like if they've already pulled out so far, um, they're kind of in this with one foot. Yeah. Yeah. And like I can best compare it to something like, for instance, um, like when Mixer bought out Ninja, right? Mm -hmm. They forked over a ton of money for Ninja to be on on their platform. And his first stream went well. A bunch of people were like, holy crap, this is this is game changing. This is crazy. And then everything started to fizzle out. He averaged like maybe like two or three thousand viewers every stream. And then Mixer shut down and they ended his contract early. So he got paid and went back to Twitch. Right. So let's say Stadia wanted to get Spider-Man. They could fork over. Or Google has the money. If they wanted to fork over all the money, like just show up at Insomniac with just a dump truck, they could. But does Insomniac take that risk? Is is a game like Spider-Man even still going to push enough people to a platform like Stadia? Is it going to save that platform? I don't think so. I think a lot of people will come and play, but how long does that last? You know. Mm-hmm. And then if it comes to a point again where it's like, well, we are this is not working. So sorry, Insomniac. <laughs> like, I guess just take the money and go do your thing now. You know. So like. Mm-hmm. They can get you, the exclusives, you bring but it's up still a, really a risk point. on the publisher's part. Yeah. And you bring up that it is a risk for publishers. But now, okay, say Insomniac would go if that, you know, deal would have happened. Yeah. Say Insomniac would be like, okay, we're not going to be exclusive to you only. We are still have this partnership with PlayStation because we know there's a bunch of games coming down the road. And yeah. we are not 100% on the... Um, the potential of stadia in terms of gathering people outside of this niche. Yeah. What they could have done is we could offer if Sony's down for it, we could offer a year exclusivity after the re- initial release of Spider-Man. That is also an exclusive title on stadia. I think for people who maybe don't gain, don't have a console, maybe not even invested into getting next gen, next gen. These are like casual gamers that just want to play those titles everybody's been talking about. Yeah, maybe I think they would buy into Stadia. Maybe but then, they would be then able the to factor open comes in. Niche. That yeah, but then the factor comes in of do they have good enough internet? You know, are, are right. they are they, well, are they going think- to be able to run the game? You know? Well, and I think that's the thing, right? Like Google has to be aware and they must have been aware from the start is, well, I don't know because the countries that Stadia was available in, there were a lot of South American um, countries as well, which, you know, I have, I know my family <laughs> in South America that lives there, like internet's not that great. <laughs> right. right. Um, so I don't know, like that's the whole thing with the Stadia launch. It seems like they, Google must be aware that this is obviously for a niche They've said that, I think, before, but then they're available in countries where obviously there will be internet issues. So it seems like there was a lot of mixed messaging happening in terms of what they would say and what they were doing. If they were fully aware that this is a niche, then you work that this is a niche. So you know that the people, if they were to buy into playing Spider-Man on Stadia, they probably would have good internet because that's your niche, Mm -hmm. right? Um, but it feels like they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do <laughs> this yeah. whole time. Well, to your point, Camille, I think that that was one hurdle. It was speaking to people like South America, for instance. You're speaking to people who might not have like the best bandwidth, for instance, right? That's only one half of it because then you also have to look at data caps. Not mm-hmm. everyone has, you know, the best, you know. Right. 
right? Like not everyone has unlimited internet and to mm-hmm. stream 4k, which is what they're really going for being that, you know, you have to buy into it, have an ongoing subscription. Yep. That's almost impossible for people who don't have unlimited internet. Yep. And that I think is like mm-hmm. one of the biggest struggles Stadia has is like, who are you really speaking towards? Cause to your point, Camille, like if they're speaking to a casual audience, are they going to waste their entire month's data just to play a game in 4K? Probably not. Are they going to subscribe to a, a platform that offers that? Probably not. But then if you pivot and start looking towards like the hardcore audience, again, we're going back to the conversation. Well, they're just going to go somewhere else and play those mm-hmm. games in 4K on yeah. a dedicated piece of hardware. Yeah. It, it, the thing is that Stadia lacks messaging across the board. And this is coming from someone who's spent... A, quite a significant amount of time trying out Stadia and testing it out because like the tech in Stadia is really good. It's just everything else is just not compelling enough for me to say, I want to go play Stadia. But what do you miss yeah. if you want to go and play Stadia? Like what could make you say, okay, I'm going to play Stadia today? Nothing. I never so had that. I, I would <laughs> actually... <laughs> well, good answer. So when Stadia came out, um, I one of you know my coworkers, Brody Leafex Moore, he's a huge Google Everything fan. Anything mm-hmm. Google and Elon Musk. That guy is for the future. You know, he is living for whatever they're selling. And he got Stadia. He got I forgot the different levels they have, but he got the like most expensive membership, right? Um, and when it launched, yeah. he he wanted to show us. So he came into work and he just launched Stadia with like our our work computers. I don't even know if work knows about this. Um, and we started playing Destiny. And it ran really well, really smoothly. Yeah. So maybe, you know, if you're trying to show off to your friends, that's one reason why you want to play Stadia. Um, if you want to sure. play it in the workplace, I guess so, like to pick up where you left off. Like maybe a lot of creatives will want that. Like if they are working um, tirelessly on a project and they want to take that break, they just boot up Stadia at work and then they play for a bit. Um, so there are people there, there's not a lot. Like I think last year they only they had less than twenty thousand users. Um, so you know they have to know that this is a niche, um, and you have to think that there's other things coming. So for me, them having their own studios made sense because then they could have exclusive titles available on Stadia, and then also maybe have that um, available in maybe even the Play Store, right on Android. Right. Google Play yeah. Store um, yeah. or with other consoles. So so it's just interesting. I don't see a future for Stadia, at least right now. Um, maybe, you know, when we're all in flying cars, when Internet's not the biggest hurdle, when Internet is seen as something that like every person in this world should have. I think that's when Stadia should be reintroduced. Stadia yeah, 2.0. Point of- <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I don't even know if it would be a 2.0 because they didn't even really go that far. Maybe like a a 1.3. 1.1. Yeah. (laughs) It's a 1.3. So I think we all agree that uh, Stadia is no more for a very long time, probably. Yeah, probably. I will say, I just want to add on one, uh, one other thing. And we, you know, we spent this like, you know, great 20 minutes just kind of like crapping on stadia and everything but the the good thing is though is that stadia kind of walked so other publishers or you know companies could run yeah in in all honesty like xbox is kind of thriving in this marketplace and then so is amazon almost like they're booting up for the launch of luna which seems to be you know offering something pretty compelling like a netflix style subscription where you sign up for like a package and you get a suite of games and i think that's really compelling too and then you got geforce now yeah I, I i think you know other companies can look at what stadia is doing and say okay well we're not going to do it this way and then that's at least something positive that can come from this sure i, I mean yeah I, at least stadia could teach other publishers or just developers or something like an amazon what yeah. not to do if that's anything like, if we're looking for a silver lining here then but I guess that's the bad yeah. The thing is, like with anything like this, someone has to make that first step and make those yes. mistakes. It doesn't right. always like it doesn't have to be Google. It doesn't like anyone can come out and make these mistakes. Yeah. But someone has to at the end of the day. As a joke, I'll say, you know, um, <laughs> the Ouya walked so Nintendo could run. 
Like, <laughs> that's, that's a good, oh, God, remember that horrible console that was supposed the to Ouya? happen? So, the Ouya. Ouya. Yeah. Um, so, so what <laughs> other console, non, like, jokingly, would you say walked so others could? The Wii U to the Switch. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there we go. There we go. We got one. Um, the, the GameCube, too. I mean, I loved it, but wasn't like quite the did, did the dreamcast walk so the gamecube could run it crawled <laughs> <laughs> okay i enough. would say the 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 wii controller walked so all other controllers could run because i mean you got the speaker in there right yeah, you got you really do yeah motion controls yeah i'm t- yeah. i i will stand by this i say this a lot but the wii controller okay uh-huh. People don't give enough love to that controller because amazing. although, you know, although a lot of people hated it, it, it did introduce a few things that stayed around and, you know, people are doing now in other Would consoles. you play Death Stranding on the, on the Wiimote? You know what? I would. Sure. <laughs> I could see the balancing mechanics happening. I'll have oh my, my nunchuck God. there. Oh, my God. It makes sense. Oh, my God. Good days. Good days. All right.